we can look into it later. Everybody, this is Sheets, and I have uh, Michael Jensen, a.k.a. Uh, Brave Jayhawk, where we're going to be talking about uh, Survivor Pool Week 3 um, and also Week 2 and maybe Weeks 4 through 18, depending on where we go. So the first thing we'd like to do is uh, I want to recap uh, what happened last week uh, with me and with the uh, and uh, and Michael will talk about him as well. For those of you who've been following us the whole season, Mike had sort of you know what what, what was expect what's expected in Survivor um, is he kind of had Armageddon the first week, so um, he was in a you know he he only had a couple of pools left. I kind of uh, not as as uh, aggressively, but pretty close. I uh, lost a bunch as well, but I was still in some stuff. So we're going to talk about it. So first, I'm going to go over my stuff. So last week, for those of you that have been following along, I had, going into last week, along with a partner, we had uh, six, we had 10 entries each in Circa. He was down to only six. Uh, actually, he had a full six, I should say that differently, because um, uh, we went all Baltimore on, on those six over there. I don't know why, but we did that. And then uh, on mine, I burned, I, I lost, whoa. Um, and I was down to only, uh, I was down to six as well um, last week. And so I, no, I was down to four actually. So what I did in my Circa is I went uh, to Giants and to Denver. Um, and as you guys know, uh, the Giants, Denver was completely a lock midway through the yeah. second half, second quarter, and the Giants had no chance. And of course, the way Survivor works, Giants won and Denver lost. So I, I went down to two over there. And my partner on the other part of uh, on his six, some reason, but we'll get to it in a minute, he went five Dallas and won, um, and won Denver. And I know what he was trying to do. Um, he, his idea was, listen, I don't want to be tempted to play freaking Dallas on Thanksgiving, so I'm just going to burn him now in a real high EV spot. I'd love to know how we're going to get to get to the end with this strategy, but, hey, he's been doing it a long time. But after the third or fourth week, we're going to talk about it together. Um, but the good thing is we have two different, different approaches, I guess, uh, leading to that. Now, there's also a uh, single pick uh, – well, I'll get to the single pick pools in a minute. In the double pick pools that I'm in, meaning – pools where I'm going to have to go doubles in week five and then week nine throughout where you basically have to just, just doing zero future value. I went with, uh, with Denver and the giants there as well. Um, basically half and half. So I lost half of the half of them to the job to Denver. And then in my single pick pools, um, boy, I went a third giants, a third Denver. And I also put went, went a decent amount of Detroit, um, so Detroit lost in overtime. And uh, so I went down there a little bit, but I say, you know, I have some giants and there's actually, oh, I'm sorry. And there's one of the, uh, one of the circuit things I, I survived with. I actually had um, uh, Buffalo. I played one Buffalo in, uh, in, in circuit as well. So um, that's a different kind of a different thing, a different strategy. Um, so I, what I didn't do, and just to kind of like, just kind of whine a little bit, what I, I say should have done, whatever. You can only judge them at the time you make these, but I was really torn between what to do. I was always on kind of Giants Denver, and I was really going to double drop uh, because of what some you said, whatever. I was going to go down to Tampa, New Orleans um, to get off of what I knew was going to be like Giants and Denver kind of chalk, and I didn't do it. And that that might be a decision that comes back to get me later. Um, you want to know the truth. I thought that was really sharp by you. I know you were saying that I want to only go down there because I only have three, have 66 entries or whatever. But, but I thought that was a really, really sharp move because I knew the giants were going to be more popular than I thought. And I knew that the Denver was like this, the, 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 the sharp play that, that everyone was going to make, you know what I mean? So that, that yeah. had, had like a full 10% in circle or 4% everywhere else. So, so dropping to, to Tampa, New Orleans, that would have, that is really and what I should have done. Results aside, so that's what kind of what I did last week. Tell tell us what you did last week. Well, first, what's interesting is not a huge discrepancy. Well, it was about double. Denver was picked twice as much as Tampa, and they were slightly more favored. But what will happen in these pools is you'll have one team 
that people as a our mass a mass group will like we're going to take this team if we're going to drop and they're kind of they kind of neglect the other possibilities and usually it's just because there's like a one point difference on the point spread so you have one team that might be six percent picked and then you have another team that's like you know two or one or a half or something definitely something to look out for because then you can make up this is our strategy this week was trying to make a move on the people that were going to drop from you know the more elite teams and Jesse and I felt like you know let's just get it over with get it over with in terms of you know what's what's be really aggressive now and try to make as many moves as possible so remember last week I said I really liked the Giants um I, I I thought it was a slam dunk play I don't use the EV chart, but I assume they're massively plus EV in Circa uh, for as a long-term season-long play. They're only 17% picked. I I would have taken them in Circa even if I knew they were 25% picked uh, because there's they're just not really usable. Right. And I so those that took the Giants in, in Circa, they definitely benefited by by doing so. We went. We had three entries left. We went to Tampa and one Denver. Um, we like right, Tampa the best. Good. good enough. Good enough. And yeah. but you're not. We're not going to put all three in Tampa. So we we, we advanced two of our our final entries. The other thing that stuck out was how many people picked Buffalo. I, I, I was I was surprised how heavily picked they were across the board and circa alone, they were like what 40% picked. I, I was not surprised that they were heavily picked in circa because you recall what happens, you know, you have these teams that are on Christmas and Thanksgiving and those yeah. teams get just dropped, just, just eliminated from. the. Percent. Yeah. I, I did say, I really like, yeah, I was really tough on Detroit. Like you can't, you can't have everything yeah. you got. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you know, the only way you could have everything this past week is if you took Tampa Bay yeah. Uh, very low owned and just not a usable team. And they don't play on the single, single game slates. Yeah. But uh, one other point I was going to make, uh, shit, I should have wrote it down. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay. Just, we'll just, we'll so, just move so, along. So let's, so let's, let's, let's move on. Um, and I did want to get your, your, your advice or opinion on something uh, for this week. Um, but so I'm sharing the survivor grid. Uh, I think I'm sharing it. Yeah, I'm sharing the survivor grid. Uh, oh, yeah, the survivor grid thing here. We're just going to list it by EV, which takes into account ownership and popularity. But remember, the ownership it's considering is single pick pools and as, as judged by either office football pool or average or whatever. It's pretty much the same. And a dynamic here, which, um, well, we'll go through te- the teams, but a dynamic here is one that we kind of identified last week with respect to Circa is that there's going to be multiple weeks before Thanksgiving and Christmas where the Christmas Thanksgiving teams are going to show up as like top plays yeah. on the board. And it's going to challenge you to figure out whether you want to, you know, take a good EV spot, honestly, um, or, you know, play the, the long-term EV uh, spot for the future. And it, uh, it does depend. So let's talk about, well, we could talk about either single pick, double pick, whatever, but may as well just like put all three of these teams together. So what do you think of Dallas, San Francisco, and Kansas City? I think Dallas is more or less unplayable this week. Um, going back to what I said the last two weeks, week eight and 10 through 13, when yeah. you look at each week individually, it looks like, oh, I have a lot of options. But when you start removing the teams that inevitably you're going to be taking prior to those weeks, you don't have a lot left. And since Dallas has a lot of playable spots, that's five out of six weeks in that stretch, eight and 10 through 13. I really like holding and saving them yep. for, uh, for, uh, for that week. And then for Circa, obviously, for Thanksgiving. Um, as well, but I, I wouldn't play Dallas in anything. Are your thoughts on any different for these other two teams? Uh, yeah. So uh, San Francisco, I think, is also a no play. Uh, I would much rather just use them next week. Yeah. No uh, it, this is. I, I would if I if I had a hundred entries, I would take zero on San Francisco. Yeah. This is where it's really important. The first thing you should always do, at least 
look one week at, in advance. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, not, it's not that difficult. Right. And the reason you need to do that is you look, what's, look, it's, you look what you have. And you sort by week four, there's a 14-point favorite, two seven and a half, and a seven. Okay, I assume most people are going to want to play one of those four teams. If you fall into that category, okay, uh, do you have – did you use Philadelphia in week one or two? Right. No, I, actually, no, week one they couldn't have been taken. But week two, this is why you couldn't – you shouldn't have taken Philadelphia in week two. Because, now, I did say it forced. I think I like them, but I was going to always have San Francisco available and use a different team in three. But look, look one week out. If you're not going to want to use Dallas, Philly, or Kansas City, then you need to not use San Francisco this week. If you've already used Dallas, Philly, or Kansas City, I'm not thinking it through if it's possible to have used some of these teams and still be in, then you should not take uh, San Francisco this week so you can leave them for next week. Because you, you, you want to be very careful depleting yourselves of these top-tier teams. Kansas City, I like. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm playing Kansas City in, in both of my, my last two entries this week because, well, they're a huge favorite. And by the strategy that we're going to use, it's not that I don't need them. It's just I can get around not having them. You're not going to be able to use each team at the best possible spot along, you know, at any point of the season. You know, you got a, a team that's 90% to win. Uh, why not, you know, 85, 90% to win? I'm just going to take it. If I lose, then I'm out. But taking the back-to-back 14-point favorites in 13 and 14, it seems very chalky, but – You mean three and four? I'm sorry, I said 13, 14. In three and four, it, it seems chalky, but looking at these projected percentages, that's not the case. And more importantly, it's allowing me to keep all of my Dallas, San, San Francisco, Buffalo, and Baltimore. I, I think it's more important to have those teams if you have them available than, you know, try to save Kansas City or Kansas City this week. Okay, so my views on Kansas City are completely pool dependent. Um, in 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 uh, for me, single pick pools uh, or whatever, I, I have no problem taking the free square with Kansas City this week. Um, uh, but my two other pools, my circa pool and my double pick pool, I can't play them. I don't think. Um, in uh, in circa, they're the biggest. You know, they're the biggest favorite on Christmas, like right now. Um, that doesn't mean I'm going to have to play them. You know what I mean? If but but. Yeah. At this point, I, I just I just can't burn them. Um, and, and and likewise, in double pick pools, which are going to require doubles, to have Kansas City available in sixteen is just too it's just too valuable for me. So, yeah, I I, I agree. With, yeah, I definitely agree with that for doubles. I'm not sure if I do though for circa. I, I, I assume you already have other plans for Philadelphia, but I think having Philadelphia there is it's not more attractive than Kansas city because I assume Kansas city would be less available than Philadelphia when you get there. But yeah, I'm like, I really, like I'm, I'm, like, I'm, like really, I'm, I'm like really greedy. Like I want to play in a perfect world. I want to be able to like Kansas city in 16 and then play oh, Philly, yeah, in Philly in 17. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, that, that, that is definitely a lights out strategy. Um, you know, for sure. Well, I, like I you said, have, I mean, Mike, yeah. you know, Mike Tyson said everybody's got a strategy to get punched in the mouth, right? Um, but uh, yeah, so so that's what I'm what what, what I am what I am strug- not struggling with really. I want to talk about these next groups. All right, so so I want to talk about um, well, we can talk about Baltimore. All right, I'm going to talk about all four of these, like Baltimore, Buffalo, Jacksonville, man. So so for me, uh, Buffalo is not in play for me at all across all pools. That, that, that's... I think, I think Buffalo is completely unplayable this week. Uh, yeah. you, if you have, if you did not use Buffalo last week, it'd be a complete waste using them this week. It yeah. will cost you six, yeah. eight, yeah. 10, yeah. 11. You, you want to have them for one of those weeks. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, now Baltimore, Jacksonville, uh, well, we'll use Miami too. Okay. So Baltimore, again, I faded them week one when everybody played them, right? So, 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 so now I have them 
I have this this Baltimore kind of like quiver in my era, okay? And trying to figure out when to drop the Baltimore on people because they're going to be low owned pretty much every time now that, well, unless you get into certain situations um, where the only people left with Baltimore are still alive, you know, whatever. Um, but I have a chance to play them now at 6% ownership, okay? And and with everything, there's a push and a pull. You know, what yeah. if, I, if I don't play them now, right, where am I really – really going to wish that I had them available. And at this point, I don't think it's that big of a deal. In other words, like, like week eight. Sure. I mean, yeah, that, let, let's, let's look at week eight. We can talk about that for a little yeah. bit. Cause week eight, we could talk about a lot actually, because, because there's a couple. Okay. So when you talk about circuit, for example, I'm not playing Dallas there. So I'm not worried about that. And I'm also probably not going to play Miami there because they have like these weird spots to play in like part B of Christmas and like part B of whatever. So I'm not, I don't want to play them either. So it's going to be something like a choice between the chargers buff. Well, now again, it depends what entry. Like I, I still have Buffalo available. Buffalo will be a nice little piece of piece of meat to drop in week eight. You know what I mean? Um, especially when no one's going to want to play Dallas or whatever. So for me, Baltimore would be, would be helpful to have an eight. And before we get back to, you know, talk about week eight, week eight, the other possibility for Baltimore would be week 14 um, against the Rams. Now, if I, if I can avoid, if I could fate, if I could somehow avoid playing him here and then avoid playing him in eight, like for example, um, it there it'd be a nice thing. Let's put it this this way. Yeah, them available in fourteen. So now here's the question: Is that enough for me to not take advantage of the ability to play them now at high EV? Because if I don't play them, and you, we could talk about week eight in a second. I'm just talking through this. If I don't play them, then it's Jacksonville at th- probably thirty five percent ownership in Circa. Okay, that's what they're. Go- I, I imagine Jacksonville is going to be insanely popular. Because, like, again, Dallas, San Francisco, Kansas City, they're not going to play. No one has Baltimore left. Not nobody. Buffalo, I don't think – so I think Jacksonville is going to – not only is Jacksonville going to be somewhat popular, but Jacksonville is is very useful. You know, like at several points. Extremely. So I, I'm, I'm – it's listen, everything's a push-pull. My current thought is that is that it's not it's, – it's, it's more worth to me to drop Baltimore now then be upset that I don't have them in the future. But tell me about what do you think about Baltimore? Now that was just circa in, in in single pick pools. I think they're perfectly reasonable. I actually prefer your Kansas City play now that I'm thinking about it to Baltimore in single pick pools. You know, it's, it's, um, but I do think Baltimore is definitely playable. Um, uh, double pick pools again. It'd be nice to fade them so that I could have them in doubles in fourteen. But then what else am I doing? Like who am I playing? Uh, Jacksonville again, Jacksonville. I could use them in doubles also. So for me, it's kind of a kind of between those. Yep. No, no one. Jacksonville will be very lowly available by week fourteen. But with the mat, I, I I put a good hour, hour and a half in this morning, taking taking a little peek, doing some hypothetical survivor with my lone two entries. Jacksonville. And, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Which team? Uh, you're you're you, Having Jacksonville later in the season for double picks would be a very good team to have. They're, they're, they're going to be used a handful of different times up until then. They might be less available than, than Baltimore by the time it, by the time it gets to it, or, or very comparable at least. I, I like four teams only this week. Yeah. Uh, I, and I'm not thinking doubles just because I'm out of, all, I'm out of doubles. Yeah. It's, it's hard to yeah. hypothetically yeah. think yeah. of all these different scenarios, but for for circa and for standard single pick pools, I like I like four teams and four teams only. I like Kansas City. That's my favorite pick across the board, regardless of pool. And if I, if I were in circa, if I had one or two entries, we'd be taking Kansas City, and I would just say Philadelphia for Christmas and hope it works out. If I had like four, six, eight entries, I would split between Kansas City, heavy on Kansas City, like three quarters. Uh, and then take like Jacksonville. I do. I have Jacksonville as my number two, but I, I think my second favorite pick is Seattle. Um, 
I did not look at the spreads. I did not verify this. Is the spread right on Survivor Grid for Seattle? Are they six point favorites? Sounds right. Okay, I, I like Seattle second. Then you're you're dropping obviously a little bit, but Seattle is not a team I'm ever taking in any scenario in Week Seven. And Week Seven is a full fade. They're hosting Arizona. They're going to be very much available, and they are going to be they are going to get absolutely loaded up on. So using them now would uh, prevent me from wimping out. And also, if you make it to the end of these things, even a single pick standard pool, you still need to pick 18 winners. And I just don't like Seattle's finish other than week 18 a, compared I, I, to teams like New Orleans. You, I have a question for you about seven. All right. Mm -hmm. So seven. if you don't take Seattle, who, who are you playing? So – when, when you play this game, and, and I did this, I have it on my spreadsheet. I put uh, – I have – I've looked at weeks five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And I, th I think there's a – there is a clear fade team in all of these weeks. So what I did was I crossed that team out. I sorted from the top, and then I just listed the teams going across because I wanted to visually see which teams kept repeating because there is a lot of repetition between weeks five and nine. You have Kansas City, Buffalo, yeah. Miami, Jacksonville. They keep popping up. Ironically, after the core teams that you want, the core teams being the meat of the league, New Orleans popped up in four of the weeks. That's the best team available after the top tier teams for that specific week. If you were to fade the teams playing Arizona three times and then Houston and Chicago. This is between weeks five and nine. New Orleans is a team that you're going to probably end up playing at some point Yep. between five and nine, unless you want to unload the clip and use all of your Kansas city, Buffalo, Philadelphia, San Francisco, Miami, those, you know, those, those top tier teams. So for week seven to answer your question, probably Cleveland or New Orleans you're dropping a little bit but again you got to remember that at some point one of these big upsets is going to is, is going to happen they're not going to lose every single week if it happens two or three times and you advance somehow especially if you advance using a second or third tier team leaving the top teams for later you're going to have the lion's share of the equity going deep in this pool you also are increasing your chances, of course, of getting knocked out earlier, but you're going to have the best teams, the strongest teams available that are going to have very low pick availability remaining. And at some point, you're going to have to drop anyway. When I kept looking at this, you're going to, be, at current spreads, you're going to be, almost every person is going to be forced in to taking a 4.5 favorite before week 11 anyway. If you use too many of these top five, top six teams, you're going to be forced into it multiple times, like three times possibly at current spreads. So you can just do it now and save those teams for later, or you can do what most everyone else is going to do and just you know keep advancing along and then just be forced into it. I'd rather take the initiative and pick my low ownership team like I did Tampa Bay last week. If I was in Circa, I really feel we would have did – at least one Tampa Bay last week. If if we were to have, if we had four entries, I, I, I would have low. I would I would have wanted to load up with the Giants, probably maybe taking one Detroit and then take one Tampa, something like that. And and when, you, when and when you get away with that, like the people that did not take Baltimore in Week One, you have a very big advantage over the people that. You know, if you did not, if you took Washington or Atlanta, because those are like the the reasonable picks yep. that people advance through week one with yep. you have a big advantage over the people that took Baltimore, you have them available and they don't. And that makes a really big difference when you keep making those level up plays like that. If you can keep advancing and holding on to those, holding on to these teams. Why not, why and not? also Jack and Jacksonville is interchangeable with Kansas city in week six. So um, you could take Kansas Jacksonville this, this week in three, and then take the Chiefs in six. But if you just add up the point spreads, you have a better win percentage going Kansas City than Jacksonville because Jacksonville is going to be a bigger favorite. So there's no reason really to take – now, if you have a portfolio of picks, there's, there's great reason to diversify your risk. But 
talking one or two picks, I would never take Jacksonville over Kansas City. I'd rather just take Jacksonville in six. And there's other spots for him as well, but you're going to have a bigger, you'll have a bigger win percentage taking Jacksonville in six. Well, I guess, no, I guess it's just Kansas City's a, a bigger favorite over Denver, but that could easily change. One other in, unintended benefit, um, and again, this, you, you said this a while ago, but of taking, when you said well, we might take Cleveland in seven, I mean, obviously, you know, if you're, if you're not taking Seattle, in a way, it doesn't even all, almost matter who you take. You know what I mean? Like, you're just basically, yeah. you're taking Arizona, honestly. <laughs> That's like you're, you're rooting for Arizona. Yeah. Um, and, but one thing about Cleveland is you get, you get two shots then to knock out the whole pool because if you, because if you take Cleveland here, then you're not playing them in week nine. When Correct. The rest of the United States of America is playing. Um, when they're and week and week week nine is a really good week to look at. Uh, when you sort by that, it's ten and a half, six and a half, and there's New Orleans popping up. New Orleans oh. is getting their row is getting very, very green. Yep. It doesn't look that attractive, but believe me, you will be taking. You will be needing New Orleans. New Orleans is can't believe I. I, I did say New Orleans was after the first week. That was a team that I didn't want to use because they had more potential, and the spreads are really shaping out that way already. I'd rather save New Orleans for fourteen, fifteen. So, if you're not going to take Cleveland, you're never taking Baltimore against Seattle as a four and a half point favorite. You're gonna you're gonna save Baltimore, and then you, you're gonna end up on a two or three point favorite anyway. So. I, I think it's easier to make these aggressive EV decisions or just aggressive decisions if you know later on you're going to do it anyway. Because if you're never going to take Cleveland and you feel that I should probably save New Orleans for 14, 15, or I might use New Orleans in six, then I'm going to be going down to a three or four point favorite anyway. Maybe I should just do it now and jump on one of these, you know, lower owned teams. I think the only option is Seattle. You you just can't you you cannot use Miami this week. You're you really need Miami for five, six, and eight. When I was looking earlier. Well, let's talk. Let's talk about eight a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. Now, again, the reason we're doing this again for those of you that are, that are following this, there are people that like ask me in Discord, like who 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 should I take this week? Who who this this? I really feel as though talking through it in this way. Um, is maybe it doesn't help you as much with this week as just telling you who to play. But I really, again, the reason I do these things is to help, is to help teach people how to learn and how to get better at this stuff. So if you could, guys can learn how to think through the these weeks the way we're doing it, it's just going to make you a better player, you know? So um, I could make it easy. I'd say, hey, tell me who you think. Oh, go ahead, take uh, Baltimore or whatever. But, uh, you know, that, that's what this is all about. All right, so we so week eight, I, I brought this up because, again, I was thinking of where Baltimore would be particularly useful if I decided to to not play them this week, okay? And so when I was originally thinking about week eight, the team that just kept on showing up for me in my head was, was, the, was I keep saying the, the Clippers, okay, but 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 the Chargers, like, like um, because they, they, you know, I just don't really see using them in the future now, now yeah i think they're i think that's my week eight fade play i, I think right. they're going to be they're going to be very heavily picked I, I the chargers might be a no pick all year well that's the thing week. you know so so the point so 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 if i'm seeing that no one's going to play them at all then everybody's seeing that you know in the future and miami probably people might play some miami but they're probably a play them in five and six um Baltimore is, I mean, no one's going to, I mean, people burn them in week one and there'll be people that play them a week in week three, just like I might, you know what I mean? Like if people are yeah. at say Baltimore, I mean, they're looking at the same, they're looking at the same board I'm looking at, right? Because if you didn't play Baltimore, you probably played Washington or who else you asked? Nobody, right? If you didn't play Baltimore. You probably played Washington. And if you played Washington, then you're the type of player to probably play the giants Right. So there's probably a lot of Washington Giants out there thinking of playing Buffalo this week. I'm excuse me, Baltimore this week. It's the way it is. So 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 there'll be people probably that play Baltimore this week as well. So this is what's going through my head. If I could if I could find it in me to 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 save Baltimore, I mean, imagine if I have to remember one of my entries is Buffalo available still. 
So if I have both Buffalo and Baltimore available to in week eight to go after these 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 Charger people, you know what I mean? Like that that's 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 quite a bit of leverage to 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 give up if I decide to go Baltimore this week. The only reason I struggle is because I don't know what else to do. You know what I mean? Like I I I might very well just just like you said, just just go Kansas City and work work the rest of it out. You know, save Baltimore and then just kind of just do whatever, even in Circa. Who knows? But but. I playing Jacksonville this week, especially in Circa, just kind of feels wrong because they're going to be usable in the future and they're going to be freaking thirty five percent owned. I think so. Uh, you you would you would be thrilled if you took Seattle and they won. You'd, you you would feel true. like yeah. you're you're walking on water. Well, because I because I because I don't have to I don't have to get tempted into week seven. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like uh, I mean you you have to pick twenty winners to get through this thing. And right, if you use Seattle there. It's really what you're not using. Every – all these other teams – Miami's a tough one. Right here, I, I, I've written down I the 5-6-8 run. And then I underlined 8, you know, as, as my hammer. But, you know, really the best time to use them is save them for that 14-15 run. Because uh, they'll be even more used once you get to that point. But in order to do that without getting, you know, too ridiculous, you have to have – Buffalo and Baltimore available. I, I looked at this because I, I made a spreadsheet, a, a mock one, yeah. using the teams that you you know people won with in week one and two. And I made I made fake entries that I'm gonna that I'm gonna that I, I'm I'm looking at when I'm doing my mapping. And uh-huh. also, I'll really direct more toward later in the season because I wanted to use a realistic representation. I, I don't I can't say you should take this team when okay. Well, how did you get there, right. Mike? Right. I mean, the only way you could have got there is if you took a bunch of teams you never would have actually. Taken. That's what I love. I love like I love like late in the season when they say, "Oh my God, Baltimore is going to be X Y Z is only going to be one percent. They're only one percent owned this week. They're a great play, yeah, but nobody's got them." <laughs> yeah, so I, I want I want I want to give a reasonable map so that oh you you know those that went this way you can do this. But what I looked at is I I crossed out the Buffalo and Baltimore rows and and that that's a that's an ugly little venture. The, the Baltimore Buffalo pickers have put themselves on because what it does is it's cramping them into, you know, one or two selections on several different weeks. And those teams are probably going to be chalkier than some of the other choices that they would have liked to have had like Buffalo or Baltimore for, you know, for week eight, Buffalo and Baltimore will be far less owned than say, Dallas, uh, obviously the Chargers, Detroit. Uh, that's a time that you'd want to l- use your Buffalo or Baltimore when a lot less people have them available a- and at, you know, similar, similar or even better spread. That is true. Um, look at these Kansas City spots again. I play them in six. I mean, certainly play them in six. Yeah, six I have like the Jacksonville and six too. You know, I'm I'm talking about like Jacksonville, like you know, that'd be a fantastic team to have 11, 11 and twelve. But you you know who's gonna end up uh, realistically, I could never go through this thing doing all these things. You, you know What's who's that? gonna end up pretty chalky in six at the end of the it's looking like the Rams all of a sudden are uh they're they're now like a touchdown plus favorite over Arizona with no other spots yeah well i put that i have that as my as my fade for week six and if you sort by week six you, you really see the same exact thing i have you see that. the same exact team kansas city buffalo miami jacksonville and then you have new orleans underneath that and again new orleans is gonna feel like a really good pick that week over the Rams, but I I disagree. I you're going to want the New Orleans for one of these late these later games. But the problem is after New Orleans, I mean, what are you going to take? You're not going to use Baltimore there. Uh, Atlanta. Some people that are still in have already used them in Week One, but it's certainly a possible pick. You're never going to use Philadelphia. You're probably never using Detroit, and and now we're down to the two point favorites. So if you're not going to if you're going to fade the Rams in six and you're going to save New Orleans, which believe me, there's a lot of reason to do that. They're, 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 
they're going to be a team that you'd like to have available in four or five different weeks after that. That means you would have to take one of those top tier teams. So Kansas City, Buffalo, Miami, Jacksonville. You know, you need to make sure you get to six without not having used too many of these. And if you've already used Buffalo, then you got to be very careful because then you'd be using another one. And when you get to six, that would be your third one that you're using. It, it becomes very problematic. You know, um, that's why Jacksonville is never a play. I, I never consider them in week one because when you look at their schedule, like, oh, they're, they're only a five or six point favorite. Yeah, but the problem is, the, all the teams above them were bet, were teams that were a lot better than them for the most part, or like one mediocre team playing a trashy team that I'm not going to take anyway. So it's a team that you're just going to need. Yeah, they had you know reasonably low ownership in week one, but even if their their season plays out as, as expected or average, they're playing. They have a bunch of games against bad teams, home and even away. It looks like in week twelve that you can plug them in a bunch of different spots where in week one, you could have just took, I don't know, the teams that I took have been eliminated, but because I, I know someone's already thinking that. I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, what's going to happen. This is going to be the, the, this is going to be the unlucky result. The unlucky result is going to be, there'll be people that play Dallas. There'll be people that play Buffalo. All these teams are early, you know, whatever. They don't have much of a plan. And what's going to happen is week 12 is going to come in Circa and it's going to be Thanksgiving. Yeah. And something's going to happen to Dallas, like Prescott's going to be out or something, but where he's, they're only like a four and a half point favorite, but they're that's still great. You can take Washington. Well, hold on, but but oh, but I can't. Them. <laughs> that's that's right. Oh my God. I, I forgot. <laughs> so these forgot. people that, that didn't play Washington all of a sudden get the benefit of playing the best play on the board. <laughs> I did not not take no. Washington because of Thanksgiving. No. That never cro- that never crossed no. my mind. Now no. that it does, like, oh, yeah, there's no way it could ever have ever have taken Washington. Right. Right. Th- things things can and they and they will keep changing. Yeah. But y- there's no way you're going to feel that bad taking Seattle this week. You you're, you're just you're just not going to. The worst you're going to feel is you're going to get to that week where week 7 and you wish you t- you had Seattle but then you you remember ah, I probably shouldn't have taken them anyway. But at least think about what you're going to do if you're going to take Seattle. You have to make your plan right now. Yeah. If I you're mean, going to take Seattle this week, say, what am I going to do? Okay. And then you look at the next teams. You look at Kansas City. You look at Buffalo. You look at San Francisco, Baltimore, Philly. Okay. Which one are you going to take? So basically, do not take New Orleans in six. Just don't do it because you, you, you at least want to have the option to take them in seven against Jacksonville. I don't think that's going to necessarily be the play, but it's nicer to have three or four teams to choose from than one or two. And New Orleans is a team that you'd like to have later anyway, so you can use it, you know, two reasons not to use New Orleans um, in six. For the off chance you take them in seven because you already use Seattle. But if you already use Seattle, okay, what am I going to do about Kansas City? Well, I, I probably shouldn't take them in six, just in case. What about Buffalo? You know, what it really does is it's just gonna it's gonna really force drop you uh, in seven. I don't see how you can not take Seattle, but take the next five teams on that list. I, I mean, can you can you come up with a plausible reason that those spreads that I mean, would you ever take any of the next five teams? Or those next five teams of those well, spreads? Here, then here's the this is this is gonna be this is why. Playing Seattle is is, think, is, is, is thought provoking this week because I know I know what's going to happen if, if I don't play them, we're going to get to seven, and they're going to be thirty five percent owned, and I'm probably just not going to care and eat. It. You know what I mean? That that's what I'll, I might end up doing if if these if these are the options, right? I mean, because yeah. looking at these guys, same things away. Well, who wants? I don't want to play Kansas City. I want to play Buffalo. I want to play San Francisco. Probably will yeah. Come, the problem and the problem is beneath that. You have Pittsburgh at the Rams. You have Atlanta. At Tampa Bay, I'm not afraid of taking road teams, but the problem is the well, the better team is on the road, and that means the spread is like going to be you know pick them ish. Right. So you you might only have one or two three point spreads outside of the top tier teams. I, I I would never ever ever take Kansas City as a five point favorite against the Chargers. I would rather take a one point 
Las Vegas team. I, I just couldn't do that because if I didn't take them as a 14-point favorite in week three, I'm not going to use them as a five-point favorite when I can take a one-point favorite. I, I'm just not going to do that. That's, that, that's, that seems ridiculous. Uh, I'd rather just hope, it, hope I advance and then use them properly later in the season like my, like my plan was. But in a standard pool, I don't think you need Kansas City. So that's why I'm really surprised at these pick percentages. I don't understand why Kansas City is only 25%. I think they're an absolute slam dunk pick. I'm not taking any Seattle. The only reason I'm taking no Seattle is I only have two entries. So I'm, I'm taking both of mine on Kansas City. If I had a bunch more, I would be taking Kansas City, Jacksonville, and Seattle. And if I took a fourth team, it would be Baltimore. But it'd still be very, very heavy Kansas City. I don't see how you need them past week six so in if you don't pick. need them pa- week, in a single pick like if you don't if you don't need them past week six then then take the free uh, square and then move on yeah i i i i, I, I very confused with these pick percentages and I, and I don't know why people would take dallas over kansas city that's very confusing to me in a, in a standard pool I, the spreads are the same but Dallas has a lot more – their best plays are in the middle of the season. The Chiefs' best plays are the end of the season. You'd rather have more good plays in, in the middle of the season than the end. And they have, like, twice as many better plays than the Chiefs have after week nine. So uh, so, so, just to summarize, I guess, um, of the top uh, favorite teams, I mean, we're all in agreement that, that Dallas and, and San Francisco are passes – and Kansas City is very usable. Um, depending on your pool, very, very different strengths as far as how, how they can be used. But but definitely, de- I mean, clear in a way, the best of those three for sure. Um, the next group, the Buffalo and Baltimore, is we don't really like Buffalo at all. I, I kind of like Baltimore. Um, and then under that, uh, can't play Miami, just too usable in the future. Jacksonville depends on your pool. They're certainly in play, but they're going to be pretty popular in, in the sharper pools where you need to save some teams. Um, and the, the, the brave, the, the quote, the brave play of the week, uh, the Jayhawk brave play of the week is Seattle, because what that does, I mean, if, if you're interested in this, you know, that puts you on this kind of old, this, this just contrarian path, like, like that, that's going to put you on a path to literally like win the whole pool by yourself. You know, and it gives you a lot of chances to get multiple KOs, you know, because like you said, look, look, look at this pattern. Let's say you, you look, obviously you have to get away with it. Right. So let's say you get past Seattle and forget. I don't even care what you do until then. But let's say then you get to week number seven. OK. And let's just say again, the same thing we talked about before. Let's say you played Cleveland. OK. You already use Seattle, so you have no choice anyway. Right. So you have one chance to knock out 50 percent plus of the pool here. Right. And if that doesn't work, but somehow again you get through, now you're going to get to week nine and you get another chance to be 50% of the pool because you're not going to be on Cleveland when everybody's playing Arizona. So yeah. it's a very aggressive, but it's a, I, I really do think that if you ran this, if you ran the survivor, you know, matrix like infinite times, I, I have to say that I think that Seattle might be the best play. You know what I mean? Um, in, in, if, if it's a amount of, pure amount of money you're going to win like in, the, in the long run. I have a feeling that that could be. I can't prove that, yeah, I, I which, think is my, which is why it's kind of cool. <laughs> I, I think it's Kansas City, but it's it, it is such a big favorite. But it's yeah. it's definitely close. I think Seattle far and away makes more money than any of the other teams by, by far. You Miami, Jacksonville, they have way too much usage. In the, in the middle the middle of the season, you're, you're going to be able to hammer them at like less than 5% as one of the biggest favorites of the week, uh, middle end of the season. And, and by the spoiler alert, I'm playing no Seattle this week. Um, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody. And we'll get after it next week. Hopefully we're still in. Good luck. Bye-bye. See you later.